He called his own magicians, they threw it too, no? What happened? Snakes also came and now. Awesome. Moses was not shaken. The very rod of Moses swallowed up the rod of the magicians. What are we talking about? The serpent swallowed up serpent. Where have we ever heard that a snake swallows snake? Have we ever heard it anywhere? This is the kingdom power we are talking about. That same power that parts the Red Sea, parted the Red Sea, Red Sea, parted. And the Israelites walk to the promised land on dry land, on dry ground. Say, Lord, I'm desperate for this. I want to see this practically. I want to see this practically. Are you ready for that? Yes. Are you ready to pay the price for power? Yes, sir. Are you sure? Yes. Okay, praise God. Let's go ahead then. What is man's greatest need? Read John 20, 22. And when he had breathed on them, he said, Receive what? The Holy Spirit. 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 Oh Jesus. Did you see something highlighted? They say receive. Remove re. What would the word be? Sieve. Say sieve. Sieve actually means something own, something you own. To sieve, it will permit to own something. So if I say receive, it means take back what was original, your originally what yours. It means that all this why Jesus going through all the processes of teaching the king about the kingdom of God, right? And going right down to the grave and coming up, the goal was so that you and me, listen up properly, be sanitized, our bodies be prepared so we can receive the Holy Spirit. Say sin divides, sin say sin separates, sin say sin mocks, sin say sin disgraces. sin disgraces. It will take that cleansing process for you now to be ready spiritually. All this while he had never breathed on them. And at this point right now, when he is about leaving them, so that they get an understanding of all what he was doing, he breathed on them. Receive the Holy Ghost. And right there, there was an act for them. It came with them. Hallelujah. Yeah, you told them it's not enough. This is just a foretaste. Stay in Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high, until you are clothed with power, I'll show you. And they went and stayed in that upper room 120 together. And the day of Pentecost came 50 days after his death. And the Holy Ghost came as promised. Before this, in John 14, he said, It is necessary, John 16, to be very precise, it is necessary for me that I should go. Verse 7 4. If I don't go, the promise of the Father is not going to come to you. So, if Jesus was not broken, Christ would not have been released. That's what people who are my job. Hallelujah. If Jesus was not broken, because in Jesus was Christ. How many understand that? I believe that's why the Roman centurion broke the body. So that the Christ will be released. Amen. That's so hard for someone. Say, receive the Holy Ghost. Therefore, God knows you and me, we need power. Say, we need power. We need power. That's why he says, I will give you power to trample upon scorpions and serpents. Luke 10 19. And over all the power of the enemy. Say, over all the power of the enemy. So kingdom power swallows up the power of the enemy. Is that resurrection power that took Jesus to life? Back to life from the grave. Amen. Also in Luke 9 verse 1, he called the disciples together and he gave them power and authority. Say power and authority. Power. Let me quickly differentiate between the two. Power simply means the ability to effect changes, to do things, to cause things to happen. Authority means the legal right to use power. Authority means what? The legal right to use power. So when you talk authority, it means that power is delegated to you. That means you are using power legally. That's why God does not just want to give power to people he has not authorized. Do you understand me? This is why the Holy Ghost cannot come and solve one who has not received Jesus. And who doesn't want to walk in his ways. That's why God on purpose will want you to go through training classes, discipleship classes, so you understand his mind. Say after me, never seek the hand of God. Come on now. Say after me. Say, never seek the hand of God. Never seek when you hand. have not yet sought his mind. When you have not yet sought his mind. It's good to know God's mind on anything before you ask for power. Many people want power too much. So they walk around and they show that they are powerful. I love character because when there is character, the authority in kingdom power is obvious. So he gave them power and authority. Say authority. authority. It actually means the legal right to act on behalf of someone. 
Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Jesus knows you need power. Blessed are they that actually come and test. They shall be healed. My God. <laughs> he knows you need power. You need power. Power delivers you from religion. Here is a man who has sick, if not power, does not want religion. Take it or leave it. I know you are taking it. Amen. You understand me? When you see kingdom power, you don't want religion again. That's the truth. So stop blaming people for living for perhaps for living some churches. They are just fed up with the routine. Amen. Praise God. Jesus last. <laughs> Let me put it to you this way, please. According to John 20, 22, if you want to understand what Adam lost, you should check what Jesus gave back to his disciples. What did he give them again? Exactly. So what did Adam lost, or what did he lose, excuse me, in the garden? The Holy Spirit, what do you see? He came to the store. And that process, careful, careful. That process, be vigilant, please. That, sorry about that. That process, that, that process demanded, that process demanded, can I go on or should I go first? Should I wait? Okay. That process demanded vigilance. That process demanded order. That process demanded discipline. That process demanded commitment. That process demanded followership. It also demanded death. Say death. Yes. Say death. Yes. Very important. It demanded that someone dies. And Jesus died for that purpose. Please be vigilant. Stay focused on that. Now let's look at the kingdom, Adam lost, and death and resurrection of Jesus. I didn't know exactly how to put that as a I, as a one word sentence thing, but it's more like a description. I want you to understand something. Adam lost what? Say kingdom. kingdom. Now, why would Jesus have to die? Why was it necessary for him to die? Praise God. That's what I want to answer right here. When Adam sinned in the garden, he lost the kingdom. Let me repeat that again. Sin against God is your willful declaration of independence from the power of God and the control of God. From the administration of God, from the government of God. When the people declare that they no longer want to be under the control of a particular government, what do they do? They have to struggle to sustain themselves also. Acts of rebellions or all rebellious acts are always met with steep resistance from the legal authority in the school was. Adam said, I don't want to be under your jurisdiction. Of course, he got tricked. When he got tricked, what happened? He lost the kingdom. The kingdom of God is love, joy, peace, and righteousness in whom? The Holy Spirit. <laughs> so if the Holy Spirit is gone, the kingdom is gone, you cannot understand the ways of God again. The kingdom of God is the rule of God to be the hearts of men. Very important. I won't talk details about it. I want to understand. Go back to the very introduction of this series. This year of the kingdom of God rediscovery. Adam's sin caused him to completely declare independence from God. God sent him away from his presence. The Holy Spirit left him because he became defied. Say defied. Say defied. His body became defied. And because of that, God could no longer dwell in such a defied God. You understand me? His blood became stained. He was not a good house for God again. Now, it will take Jesus coming back to earth with pure blood. You remember that on Good Friday, I thought about that. To live a righteous life without sin. Second Corinthians 5 to 1. He became sin for you and you know you no sin. Say you no know sin. That means he has never sinned so that you can become God's righteousness in him. Hallelujah. Say this when you say, My life is hidden in Christ. It's hidden in, Christ. in God. If you ever understand that, you will stop being afraid of small, small occultists who threaten you. That means if you want to take your life, you need permission from who? From God and also from Jesus. No man buys uses his blood to buy you and just hands it over to the net them when he knows you have a good play right here. So when he lost that kingdom, hold on right now, Jesus has to come and restore that kingdom. 
But for that restoration to take place, you need to be made clean. I need to be made clean. His blood needed to wash you and me our sins away. So that we can be clean before God, so to speak, fully again. And for the Holy Spirit to feed us back. Praise God. And to show to us also that He has that power to bring back life to mankind. On that very faithful Sunday morning, say Sunday morning, He resurrected as He has spoken. Destroy this temple. In three days, it will be up again. Amen. Amen. Say three days. Can I pause here and say something about that briefly? And I want you to hear this properly. If Jesus died on Saturday, prophecy perhaps will not be fulfilled. Let me show you how. He was killed on work Friday. On Friday, the Jewish people who are into Judaism, they prepare for the Sabbath on Friday. Because on Saturday, nobody must work. That it was not even there in anybody. So on Friday, as he is killed, they have to hear him and bury him. He must not remain on the cross. So when they heard him buried him, his body was not yet prepared for burial. Because the Jews have a custom of burying someone with spices. When you read the gospel in John 19, you notice that. Uh, Nicodemus, who came to him at night, actually bought spices, very expensive spices, to the tune of more than 100,000 pounds. I did a conversion and brought so that his body away and bound. All right. So, all preparations have to be done on Friday. If we don't quickly bury him on Friday, since he's dead, on Saturday we have to take care of the cause of his I understand that. How many understand that? So they have to do that on Friday. He is not buried on Friday. But his body cannot be embalmed because it's a Sabbath. Nobody must walk. I love the way God's power destroys man's laws and millions. You don't understand what I'm about to say there, do you? On Sunday morning, that's why Mary, Matthew 28, as you see right there, and the other ladies, they ran quickly with spices to go and embalm his body. When you are not rushing, that early Sunday morning, what happened? He had resurrected. What happened if they rush on a Monday morning? They wouldn't have seen his body. What happened if Jesus died on Thursday? Perhaps he would have resurrected on Saturday, and no one would have seen because they said that nobody was walking. This is awesome. It will take exactly those three days, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday for prophecy to be fulfilled. And also now, that means his death and resurrection on the Sunday automatically changed the Sabbath. I don't care what others say. And we have been ushered into a new day within a week that we should worship the Lord. Six days a man must walk, the seventh day he must devote it to worshiping the Lord. Sunday, therefore, is dear. That's why the Bible says on the first day of the week. So, what's the first day of the week? Sunday, he rose. How dare you tell me that this man's resurrection is something we should take casually? I should play with Sunday. You are crazy. You don't know what you are talking about. If he never rose from the dead, number one, he would have been a liar. Even on Friday, they were mocking him. He said he killed his body in three days. I will rest. Where is he now? He cannot even hear himself. So if Jesus never rose from the dead, do you know he would have become a liar? He would have become a liar. And you know the implications, we cannot trust a liar, two of us. Accuracy in the fulfillment of the prophetic word we reflect. In John 2, he whipped people up in the temple for changing God's house into a marketplace. When he was asked by what authority are you doing this, he said, kill this body. In 30 days, I will raise it up again. Kill this temple, destroy this temple, in other words, praise God. So his death and resurrection is a true fulfillment of what prophecy Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And it had to happen accordingly on Friday. So that Sunday will be the third day for him to rise. Praise God. I don't know whether you heard something right there. I don't know whether you heard something right there. Sunday is dear to me. So when he resurrected, he ushered man into a new dimension of relationship with him. 
and he released his spirit, which is what you are doing with it. Because in your spirit, you only need spirit, God's spirit. To be able to sustain yourself. Hallelujah. After the Sabbath had done on the first day of the week, done means early that Sunday morning. What happened? Mary Magdalene and other and, and other Mary went to look at the tomb. What happened? There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven. See an angel of the Lord. An angel of the and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. Hallelujah. Rolled back the stone and sat on it to keep the grave open. Now, watch this. The guards at the tomb saw what happened. But they were like dead men. And that's why they went and reported to the chief priest. It's true. He reveals this man what he said is true. We saw it. We were gathered. And what happened, we cannot begin to be explained. They say, shh, don't make it hurt by anybody. We will bribe you with a lot of money. Go and say that we were asleep at night. In other words, on Saturday morning, on Saturday night, perhaps. What about time at night? His disciples came and stole him. His disciples are Jewish people. They know they cannot break the Sabbath for two of us. But it was all a lie. And to this day, those in Judaism know that Jesus' body was stolen and he never was going to break. See, today, the Bible says it's recorded like that. Think about it. Lie spelling, say religion. religion. Can be bought with money. Religion will silence you, not the kingdom. Take me out of this place and say, don't preach again. Whatever I step, I'll keep preaching. It's inside. It's not about rituals and gathering people and doing ceremonies. They bribed the soldiers and they told a lie. But the women bore witness because Jesus would meet them alone. They were asking, Who are you looking for? They said, We're looking for a savior. Later on, he will appear to them. And he proved to them that he was really pierced. He showed his wrist and they saw the wounds and tasted it. And he made a profound statement. Spirits don't have flesh. That's a strong statement. Come and feel it. But he had the ability to disappear and appear. How comes witches and wizards know this thing and don't know it? <laughs> I have had practical testimonies of men of God transposed now in this dispensation. Ministering in another church branch. Practically, there was a minister of God who was engaged for a speaking conference in the U.S. He was still in his home country and right there ministry at that same appointed time. Sometimes they locked into the airport before they went to normally to enter the plane, they already appeared in the next dimension. Supernatural transposition. It happened in Acts chapter 8. Philip was carried from Samaria to Azitus supernaturally by the Holy Ghost. Said dimensions of power. Said dimensions in God. Many of you will travel like that in Jesus' name. Yeah. Jesus appeared any time the way he wanted. They are seated together and see doubting whether he is really resurrected. He showed up himself. Come on then. <laughs> I'm sure if he comes to your room today, you will say, This is witchcraft. You will cast him a demon. You will, you, I know you will be shaking. Praise God. Let me not take much time on this. The kingdom, okay, bottom line is this Adam lost the kingdom. Jesus came back to restore the kingdom. It does not end at Calvary, stop celebrating Calvary and forgetting the real thing. He actually gave them the Holy Spirit. That was the original thing that Jesus was wanted to give. When you would break this body, you would make it now very okay, like that for me, easy for me to release the Spirit. That's why Paul understood it and laughed at them. If only they knew it, that killing Jesus now means restoring the whole kingdom of God to everyone. They will not have killed him, two of us. Because you now killed one man, he is now he ascended up now and has distributed himself to every people at the same time. Doing different activities at the same time on earth. Praise God. Isaiah 7 verse 14 talks how a virgin will be with child and will put to bed a child. That name of that child will be Emmanuel, which means God in dwelling man. And in Isaiah 9 verse 6, that child will bring what? Say a government, government on earth. And that child came with a government. With a government. They call the kingdom government. Now let's look at the necessity for kingdom power. Say kingdom power. Kingdom power. They, they, what I want to address right here, we're still talking about understanding and engaging the 